Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum. Last time, we explored Jubilife City and its surrounding areas, catching ourselves a Zubat. I love the James Bond pose when I check my watch. We also caught up with Barry out of the east side of town. On the way to Orberg City, we had a battle with him, and with the route clear, this time we're heading out toward Orberg and the first Pokemon gym. Now, on this route, first thing, I want to battle this guy. I get my get up and go for my Pokemon. Here we go, Cricketot, Zubat. I want to battle you not because you have great taste in Pokemon by raising a Zubat, but because you have horrible taste in Pokemon by raising a Cricketot, yeah. Cricketot is a really rare encounter on those routes that we could find it on before, and this is a nice place that you can encounter it. It's not a required encounter, or it's not part of any sort of required battle, but it is a required encounter if you want to get 100%. That's what I was trying to say. However, while Zubat is fighting this thing, I have a bit of a personal history with this particular Cricketot. I still stand by all the horrible things that I said about it. I mean, yeah, it really is not a very good Pokemon, and it totally was a scrap pre-evolution for Volbeat and Illumise that they changed at the last minute for some reason. Um, that's kind of Gen 5's job to do that sort of thing, though. But no, they did it here, too. This Cricketot. You saw it use Growl right there. It only knows Growl and Bide just like any other Cricketot. I had one playthrough years ago where I had just my starter Pokemon at this point. I tackled it once, and it took a little more than half its HP. It had a little less than half left. I tackle it again, and for those that don't know, damage in Pokemon has a little bit of variance to it. It hangs on with just a sliver of red health. I guess you, I'm betting you know what happens next. It unleashes Bide on me, one shots my starter, and I got a game over to a Cricketot. So I stand by all those things I say about Cricketot, but truth is, I did get a game over to one one time. I wanted to get that off my chest. Took care of that, we got ourselves an item right here. Love these evening colors. I'll probably be playing in the evening a lot just because I like how it looks so much. I do kind of wish that we had some autumn colors on the ground and in the trees, but this isn't fifth generation. I'm gonna have to complete this before I can get around to that one or before I can even begin working towards it. Trainer tips, a Pokemon moves uh, uh, use energy called power points or PP for short. So yeah, moves have limited usage. You can restore it by going to a Pokemon Center. There's other ways to restore it that we'll see a little bit later on. Uh, you, I don't believe, have any Pokemon that I want to see for my Pokedex, but I, I could use the experience. Love my voice crack. Also, kid, I sincerely hope you're a fan of the Cowboys, because if you are not, you are going to get so annoyed at all the people who think they're being clever by making that joke the first time they hear your name. With that done, just keep going onward. I didn't really mean to fight you, but... I think I wanted to fight you, actually, now that I think about it more. <laughs> I think this guy has a trainer that we... Or, this guy has a trainer. No, this trainer has a Pokemon that we want to see. Yes, he has Machop. We have not had an opportunity to catch us yet, and this is another one that you could possibly miss, so you want to fight this guy as a way to fill this into your Pokedex. From that battle, Zubat grew to level 9 and learned Astonish. That is a ghost-type move that has a chance of making the opponent flinch. So next time we get into a battle, definitely want to show that off. Guess this means I'm not ready for the gym challenge yet. Yeah, kid, go back to wearing shorts and feeling comfy or whatever it is you kids do these days, whatever you think is hip. I think I also want to talk to you. I got a nifty keen gym badge from the gym leader in Orberg City. Well, looks like we got quite the challenge ahead of us right here. And you only have one Pokemon. It's a Psyduck, so I guess she might have listened to my advice. Okay, now I'm just sounding really vain right now. Well, there were three reasons I wanted to fight you. One is that you have a Psyduck, which is a Pokemon you're not guaranteed to find. Two is that I want to test out Astonish and see if I get lucky getting a flinch on the very first time that I use it. Oh wow, um, that is a good sign of things to come. And third is that there is one new encounter on this route that I wanted to go over and we're getting near the end of the route. And that is Abra. Anyone who's played Red and Blue could tell you what an incredible Pokemon Abra is. It eventually becomes one of the best special attackers in all of Pokemon, Alakazam. However, there are a few major hurdles standing between you and that. First off is that Abra only knows Teleport. Even though Abra has a very respectable special attack stat, 105 to be exact, which I think is the highest stat we've seen anything have up to this point in the game, it's not able to really use that. Its only move by default is Teleport, which merely lets it escape from a wild Pokemon battle automatically. Any TMs that Abra can learn are not accessible to us yet. In addition to all of that, it will run away if it is ever given a chance to make a move when you are battling against it in the wild. You only get one turn to catch it. 
Your chances of catching a wild Abra at full health in a Pokeball is 26.1%. I know this from memory. I have agonized over catching Abra that much throughout my life. It's a real pain. In addition to that, you need access to multiplayer if you want to fully evolve it as you need to trade an Abra and of course, well, trade it back to actually keep it. If you don't have access to multiplayer, you might want to pass on it. That's not to say that it's impossible to go through a full Pokemon game with Kadabra, the middle stage. It is a very respectable Pokemon in itself, and I've done it before. It's just that, well, it's not having one of the best special attackers in the game at level freaking 16. Seriously, I can't stress how good it is. But yeah, if you want to raise an Abra, I highly recommend not catching it here. You're going to have a much easier opportunity to obtain an Abra in not long at all. Really, I mean that. Possibly within the same video, we are going to have an easier way of getting an Abra than trying to catch it in the wild with those horrible odds. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Zubat, uh, you know, I might as well run from this battle. I don't think I'm going to get any worthwhile experience on a level 4 Bidu. Let's get this, an X Defend. That away, and up here we have another item. Man, I can't be getting annoyed this quickly here. Here we have our very first repel, and man, do I need one of these things. That's going to be the only one you'll have for a while, so use it wisely. And by that, I mean you probably don't want to use it right now, as much as it might be tempting. If you want to know exactly how a repel works, it makes it so that you can't run into wild Pokemon that are weaker than whoever is in your front slot, so anybody weaker than Zubat would simply just not appear. Basically, on a route like this, it would completely eliminate encounters. Now, I want to draw special attention to this. Take in that cave entrance. For this is the first time in the Pokemon series that a cave entrance faces east or west. Up until now, it's always been north or south. Now wasn't that a fulfilling experience? Here we are, Orberg Gate, our very first dungeon in the game. Let's get to it. It's sparkling new Poketch. Your awkwardness as a traveler. Wait, Poketches make people awkward? Y you mean great trainers don't wear these things? Commercials lied to me! Okay, I kinda had a feeling already. So you're a fellow, you're a new fellow friend of Pokemon. So let me make this gift of a hidden machine to you. We get HM06 for this. Hidden machine, or HM for short, contains the hidden move Rock Smash. Pokemon learning Rock Smash can smash small boulders in the field. But the trainer has to have the gym badge from Orberg City. If you don't have that badge, you can't make a Pokemon use the hidden move Rock Smash outside of battle. So here is that motivation for doing gym battles that has taken oh so long to show up. We can't go to the north of Jubilife until we get that gym badge and so we can use Rock Smash and explore more of the region, thus finding more Pokemon. I think I do want to teach this to Bidoof right now. HMs are infinite use, so you don't have to worry about using this up. Yes, I want to teach this, even though I can't use it right away, might as well. And how has Bidoof not picked up any items from being in my from being in my party? I almost said inventory. I don't think you're an object, Bidoof, as much as you sure have been like one. Hold up, I'm gonna interrupt myself right here. If you haven't guessed, I didn't realize this in the recording. I sat on this screen for about a minute in disbelief over how I could have possibly caught a Bidoof that didn't have pickup for its ability, when Bidoof doesn't even get pickup for an ability. I would call myself an idiot, and hey, maybe I am, but I think my subconscious just really misses having Zigzagoon as my HM user. I mean, who doesn't like catching one of those early game for HM moves and getting free items out of it through the entire game? It's wonderful. I'm gonna walk around these kids, don't need to fight them for anything, and hey, finally ran right into a wild Pokemon. Is this gonna be the new one for Orberg Gate? Oh, of course it's not. I can never be classy when introducing these bios, but here it is anyway. Geodude is our new encounter for Orberg Gate. It is capable of taking hits and dealing them back for large amounts of damage. And not far from when it's caught, it learns Rollout, which is really powerful for right now. Rollout does double damage every time it is used in succession. This can get out of hand very quickly, Whitney's Mill Tank notwithstanding. And even more so, Geodude being a rock type gets same type attack bonus with it, which is even better. But speaking of its type, that's about where the positives end. There's many rock and ground types out there, and with the exception of one single shiny solid rock, if you know what I mean, they all have six weaknesses, and many of them are common types, including two quad weaknesses. With it being slow, it might be hard to use. In addition to that, it's also a trade evolution, and I wouldn't say that Graveler is as solid as Kadabra is if you can't trade to evolve it. In addition to that, Sturdy hasn't yet gotten its Gen 5 buff. You're merely just immune specifically to one-hit KO moves. I'm gonna hand it to Zubat. It 
came very close to losing that battle to a Zubat that was three levels weaker than it, but you know, it didn't. Here we got this cave. And that's seriously it. Great first dungeon there, guys, really. I know that we had the Ravage Path though, but it's like that was not a required place for us to go. That is the first dungeon that you're meant to go through, and that is seriously it. Howdy, trainer. Oh wow, he greets us with a howdy, and Diamond and Pearl, he called you a total noob. Gee, I wonder why they changed that. Better do something about you not having a gym badge. I'll take you to the Pokemon gym. Uh, I think I'm quite capable of walking around town. I mean, Jubilife is kind of bigger than this place. Huh? There's someone there. Someone indeed. Huh? Oh, it's you, Emil. You finally got here. You're slow like always. But anyway, gym leader's tough. Like, seriously serious. If the gym leader's this tough, I wonder how it compares to my dad. Huh? I just drifted there. Anyway, gym leader's gone after the coal mine. If you want to take on the gym leader, you'd better go to the mine. Is that guy in front of the gym your friend? He's sort of twitchy and impatient. Wow, he really wears his heart in his sleeve if somebody could tell that that quickly. I think I want to go to wherever the Pokemon Center is. I thought it was over there, but I guess it must be over here if it's not over there. You see, it's kind of like an English thing. <laughs> okay. Let's heal up really quick. Yes, yes, yes. Never met a soul who doesn't like that jingle. It's just so nice. I think that's Psychic over there. I want to talk to him. Hmm. What is your favorite kind of trainer? Can you tell me? You should be able to read my mind if you really are a Psychic, but this is determining what you will look like in multiplayer modes to other players, as it would be pretty darn horrific to just have about a million of the same person walking around in the same room. I'm speaking partly from experience. I've played a lot of MMOs, okay? I'm not a reality bender. Uh, so let's see, what do I want to be? I don't particularly like any of these, but I think I'm gonna go with Roughneck just for comedic effect, really, because that's about as different as you could possibly get from how I really am. I mean, seriously, I am such a wimp. Is this, um, okay, it does refresh. Okay, if you do tap that, it refreshes the health, though, because it hadn't restored. Uh, do you have anything to say? Hmm? Who or what is this Team Galactic? They make wonderful claims of dream of a dream energy source on one hand, but rumor has it they steal Pokemon by others from others by force. It's a mystery. They're mysterious. Isn't anyone investigating them? Well, sounds like we have a very good tip to tell that looker fellow whenever we see him next. Now, uh, Orberg City. There's quite a few things for us to do here, including listening to this really bopping music. Seriously, if you've never given Orberg City a listen, do so. I like it a lot. I think in one of these buildings, somebody has something really good for us. Uh, gym leaders like in a trainer you meet, obviously they're a lot tougher. A lot. I'd take as many Pokemon as possible if I were you. Yeah, even if you have like a sacrificial Pokemon like that Bidoof, you want to have a larger party generally. Um, Pokemon and trainers in Sinnoh want to defeat all the gyms, getting all the badges from each of them. Of course, let's go up here. I think it's up here. Catching Pokemon? Here, take this if you like. This right here! I was right. Dusk Ball. In my opinion. No, actually, no. I'm not even going to say it's an opinion. Best early game item you can get from an NPC in any Pokemon game. Dusk Ball is an incredible item. Also, this guy's Psyduck's name is Yellow. How uncreative of him. But Dusk Ball, yes. If used during the day, it's the same as a normal Pokeball, but if it's used at nighttime or in a cave, it is a better chance of catching a Pokemon than an Ultra Ball. This is one of the most helpful items to you when filling in your Pokedex. One of the most helpful items against hard to catch Pokemon. Especially if you're a night player like, well, most people I know that play the series are, this is instrumental to you. You want to pick this up and just if you have any sort of last ditch effort that you need to catch something early on, this will most likely do it. You want this. Can't sing enough praise about it. Rourke is a user of Rock-type Pokemon. Do you think Rock-type Pokemon are nice? I like how lumpy they are. I can't say I've ever heard lumpy used as a positive adjective before, but hey, at least you're not like, ow, I tripped over it. Why can't it be all frilly and pink with a floral pattern on it like that one girl outside of Mount Moon? Anyway, I've gone north here to Route 207. There's some grass up here with some new Pokemon we haven't seen before, and you might want to stop off here before challenging the gym. So first off, we have Machop. Machop is very simple. It's the trademark fighting type Pokemon. Physical attacker that happens to also be very bulky. But that's not a bad thing. And it also has the awesome ability of no guard. N attacks from neither side of the field are capable of missing while Machop is out. It doesn't really get moves that take advantage of this ability for quite a while, but trust me, it does get some. If you can get past the fact that Machop has a trade evolution coming up if you have access to multiplayer, it's definitely something you should consider adding to your team. In fact, at one point of working on this Let's Play, I planned to catch him a chop right here and raise it. I ultimately decided against it for reasons you'll see later, but yeah, it really is a great Pokemon. 
Second up is Ponyta. You can only catch it this early in Platinum version. It is a physical sweeper, oddly enough. Yeah, it's not one of the better fire types out there. While it is very fast, its moves don't really complement its stats all that well. On the plus side, it can get flash fire for its ability, which is the one that I easily recommend out of the two. If you know your opponent's about to use a fire type move, just switch into it. It takes no damage and its fire type moves will do more damage after being hit by one. It's a really solid ability, though it's not the only Pokemon in the game that gets this ability and I think there are better options even for this strategy. If that hasn't swayed you away from it, then that evolution level probably will. Level 40? When you're catching it at like level six? Are you serious right now? I mean, oh, okay, looking on the positives, it can be good as a short-term solution because after Orberg City, we are gonna be fighting a lot of things that are weak to fire types. Um, and I guess if you wanna view this as a positive, you're not playing Diamond and Pearl where Ponyta was the only fire type in the Sinnoh decks other than Chimchar. No, really, that's a thing that happened. Look it up. So I'm happy to say that there are other options, but if you're playing Diamond and Pearl, sorry, if you didn't pick Chimchar, you're out of luck if you want a fire type and don't want to use Ponyta. I'm gonna stop mocking it now though. I don't want to beat a dead horse. Oh, wow! Okay, suddenly not so salty about running into encounters all the time. Bodhi got Razor Leaf. That is our first physical grass type move. That's gonna be very handy in the fights coming up. Slope is too slippery, you'll need a bike to get up. You don't have a bicycle, there's a cycle shop in Eterna City. Well, gee, it really is a shame that Eterna City, wait for it, happens to be north of that slope. Really nice there. Really nice. You, sir, are just taunting me for not having a bicycle. Don't even try to deny it for one moment. All right. Well, we're looking pretty good in the way of items. We've gone over all the Pokemon in the area. Now, I think here in town, I think it might be this house. I certainly hope it is. Uh, is it you? Uh, Pokemon different natures and personalities. Uh, seeing Pokemon in different colors. Have you seen a herd of differently colored Pokemon? Well, I've caught one in my past. A regular Pikachu has a yellow body, correct? Well, the different colored Pikachu has sort of an orange body. And uh, this Pikachu seems to be really jealous of those orange Pikachus being like, hey, why are you talking about them? Why are you talking about me? Come on, I'm cool too, right? Right? Okay, no. Um, sorry, Pikachu. Even though you are the series mascot, I don't think he really thinks you're that cool if all he's being is like, man, I wish I had one of those cool orange Pikachus. All the cool kids got those. I think, is it in here? Okay, I'm just trying to find a, yes! Wow, okay, very next NPC. I really should have just rolled with it and pretended like I knew it. Right here, this girl wants him a chop. If you give her one, she will trade you an Abra. It will be the same level as whatever Machop you caught that you gave to her. It'll be the same level as whatever Machop that you give her. And yeah, it's just a lot more reliable to go out and catch a Machop north of town, like I just showed, and trade her that Abra, a trader for that Abra. The only real benefit of catching an Abra in the wild is that it has a chance of holding a Twisted Spoon, which is an item that boosts psychic type moves. But for one, Abra's not gonna be using those for a while. And in addition to that, um, this Abra does have an Orenberry, which is a hold item that restores 10 HP whenever you get low on health. So it's not like you're not getting a hold item out of the deal anyway. I'll poke on a special power called Nobility. Of course, we already knew that. Uh, Pachirisu's pick. Yeah, I like pickup a lot too. Would be nice if I had it. <laughs> okay, wow, these NPCs are really saying a lot of things. Um, showing you a Pokemon called Geodude, oh. I, well, I can definitely do that. I think I will go catch this guy a Geodude really quick just to see what he has to say. I don't remember that guy being there. I mean, I know this game really well and I've played through it many times, but of course I don't know what every single last NPC is gonna say. This isn't Earthbound. Just as a tip though, if you wanna do this, I recommend going out to Route 207 and not to Orberg Gate. I have no idea why they did this, but in Diamond and Pearl, Geodude was a perfectly common Pokemon in Orberg Gate. Yet in Platinum, they lowered it to something really stupid like a 5% chance or something. I mean, I can't imagine all the kids that were like, oh, this guy wants to see a Geodude. I'm gonna go into the last cave that I saw in Cashman because that's where you'd find them. Eh, no you won't. And they just wandered around in there for hours not being able to find one. Again, no idea why they thought it was a good idea, but yeah, it'll save you a lot of time if you just go north here. Well, even though it is more common up here, it doesn't really seem to help me all that much. Zubat has almost gotten another level off of all the stuff that we have fought in here before we got a Geodude. 
As much as it's supposed to be more common up here, I somehow don't buy it. Cut a Geodude just for you, good buddy, and since we found two Pokeballs up there on Route 207, it's all just as well. I had one net gain out of this. Uh, oh, that Pokemon, that's a Geodude! Wow, that's so cool, it's so cute! It's not exactly what I would use to describe it. Um, oh, token of your thanks, we get a... So basically, I did all that to turn one of my Pokeballs into a Heal Ball that I will never use. Thanks for that. Thanks a lot. Well, okay, I was just kind of curious as to what he would give me if I did that, and, well, you know, I got what I was asking for. It just wasn't as good as I was hoping. Anyway, I think we made a lot of progress here today, though. We got to Orberg City, we checked out the surrounding areas, got to see lots of new Pokemon, got a lot stronger, got another new move for Turtwig that I really can't wait to use, um, and also I learned I need a new Bidoof, which oh. actually sounds pretty subjective now that I say it out loud, but still. Oh. Um, but... We also learned, more importantly, that this town's gym leader is down in the Orberg Mines. And next time on Pokemon Platinum, we go spelunking after him. See you guys then. That's such a fun word, spelunking.